Pure Kentucky XO Bourbon from Willet. Uh, it's one of those bottles I've got a lot of questions about. I haven't reviewed this one ever before. <laughs> uh, it's gone through some changes. We'll talk about that. This is a bottle from Willet. Retails for about 35 to 40 bucks. It was once sourced. Now it's all Willet. 107 proof. Let's talk about it today on What's on the Shelf Wednesday. Welcome back to What's on the Shelf Wednesday on the Mash and Drum. I am Jason C. And this is the series where I bring you quick reviews of whiskeys that you can actually find on the shelf, including bourbons, rye, scotches, Irish whiskeys, and more. So what's on the shelf today? Pure Kentucky XO Bourbon from Willet, one of the cheaper options from Willet, and also one of their most available. Take a closer look. So as I mentioned, this bottle has gone through a few changes recently. This was this used to be a source product from Willet for many years. Uh, the label, the original label, had white writing and, uh, that said Pure Kentucky on it. Uh, and the side label used to say original small batch bourbon, handmade in Kentucky, aged in new charred oak barrels, hand bottled in Kentucky. Now the source was undisclosed, uh, but it did say from Kentucky, so we can rule out MGP. A lot of people thought it was Heaven Hill or maybe even Jim Beam. Uh, because of that, you know, that vicinity, they're, they're pretty close when you go to Kentucky, you know, Heaven Hill is pretty much right next to, to Willet. Uh, it did have kind of a nuttier flavor profile. Now this one uh, says original small batch bourbon, handmade and hand bottled in Kentucky, aged in new charred oak barrels, distilled, aged and bottled in Kentucky by Willet Distillery, Bardstown, Nelson County, Kentucky. So we could probably rule out that this is sourced anymore uh, based on the label. Looks like it's all Willet distillate right now that's aged and, uh, and in this bottle. Again, the old bottle was a screw top and now this has a bottle corked uh, this time for the new bottle. Um, the label that used to have white writing, as I mentioned, is now gold uh, on the front as well. Plus, I think the just the bottle shape has changed a little bit. I don't have an old bottle anymore to compare. Retails for about 35 to 40 bucks, depending where you are. Now that 107 proof point we see in other bottles like Weller Antique and even Baker's Bourbon from Jim Beam and even Old Rip Van Winkle 10 from Buffalo Trace. So what's with the 107 proof point? Well, until 1962, distillers weren't allowed to barrel whiskey at 125 proof the way they do today. The laws in those days permitted no higher than 110 and traditional barrelings were mostly at 100 proof. Now, given the normal rise in proof over four years, 107 was most likely the expected dumping proof, which was then cut to 186 or 80 in bottling. 107 proof was what we would be calling barrel proof in today's, today's terms. All right, so let's try this. I actually get a nice brown butter note to, to kick it all off, which is, you know, a very welcoming note. A little bit of almond. There's definitely a light fruit note coming through as well. Maybe a little bit of juicy fruit gum. Maybe some apple. I think, it, I think it's more coming through like caramel apple, actually. Not a bad nose. It's got some herbal qualities to it. It's minty. Get a little bit of a rye spice in there too. Some black pepper. Get a little bit of oak too. I think it has a nice, decently balanced nose. You can definitely smell the proof. It does smell like it's got a little bit of, you know, heft to it. It's got some, uh, some potency to it. All right, let's give it a go. Man, that's a, that's a spicy meatball. <laughs> I did not expect that much uh, proof and spice that comes through, but yeah, it, it really hits you on the back of the palate. All right, second sip. Pal, that was the first sip of the day, so that makes sense. <laughs> second sip, a lot more, um, you know, tame. But I, I am digging the finish on this one. It's, it's got this lingering pepperiness that you guys know I love. 
I don't like a finish that just goes away and dies and doesn't do anything. This, you know, even beyond the front of the palate is leaving some nice uh, peppery spiciness to it. But on the front, getting more of that caramel apple note, uh, definitely a little bit of some mintiness, some spiciness as well. I think you get your typical vanillas here, but I'm looking for that touch of fruit that I was getting on the nose. Man, I'm not so sure about the palate, but the best part of this so far is the finish. The finish just, it's this beautiful lingering spice. But yeah, the caramel apple note, the vanilla, I think I am getting the little hint of fruit, but I mean, just could be like a slight cherry note here, but it's a little bit medicinal. I don't know, the more I sip this, the, the front of the palate is just getting less interesting. The best part of this still, like I've been saying, is the, you know, is the finish on it. It's peppery, it lingers, it's a little bit sweet, it's got some nice oak balance on the finish. Right from the mid to the back of the palate, to the, right from the mid palate all the way to the finish, it's where you get all those flavors. The front of the palate's lacking though for me a little bit. It's not giving me all the depth of flavor I was finding on the nose. Yeah, the first sip was the best sip. Every sip I've taken after that, it's just kind of gone flat a little bit. All right, I'm gonna do a little What's on the Shelf Wednesday bonus time. Let's do a quick comparison to Baker's and Weller Antique, both 107 proof. All right, welcome back, folks. It's my uh, my game show voice. Uh, <laughs> all right, we have the Pure Kentucky right here. This is Weller 107 from uh, Buffalo Trace. Uh, Weller Antique, as it's uh, more commonly known for. Said to be six to seven years old, about. Uh, and then you have Baker's. This is the newly, you know, remodeled, rebranded uh, Baker's. Remember, Baker's from Jim Beam used to be a small batch product, uh, seven years old. Now we have a single barrel product from Beam. It's uh, got a brand new bottle design. And sometimes you could find bottles that are eight and even nine years old, uh, depending on the single barrel. So let's do a uh, quick uh, comparison. Again, all of them 107 proof. Now, I know it's a little unfair. I mean, Weller is a weeder. But Weller is definitely, man. Weller Antique tends to be very floral for me on the nose. Honey, cherry. Definitely some spice too, a little bit of cinnamon. And then the Baker's, this particular Baker's is a lot of oak. A lot of oak, a little bit of chocolate. Definitely that beam nuttiness is there. Very different, all three noses couldn't be more different, which is really interesting. All right, let's try it on the palate. I'm gonna go, to, whoa, what was that in the, in the, in the Willet, in the Pure Kentucky. I'm actually starting to pick out like a barbecue smoke note a little bit in the Pure Kentucky. That's, did not get that in the beginning. But again, this is a pretty fresh pour, so now as this is opening up, getting a little bit like a barbecue smoke to go along with the apple and the and the and the earthiness to it. See, this is this is what happens. He <laughs> lets some stuff open up. All right, let's try the Kentucky again. It's staying consistent. There's a little bit of a drying aspect to it. But yeah, I'm actually starting to pick up a little bit of that smoke on the palate too. Maybe because, you know, it's kind of triggering my brain now because I smelled it. But yeah, getting a little bit of that. Again, the caramel apple still there. That, the, the red fruit that I was getting on the nose, I'm not really getting on the palate anymore. Um, but that spice from Willet is still from front to back all the way through. It's probably the one, you know, good thing I really like about this bottle so far. Let's try the Weller. Yeah, the Weller is a lot sweeter, which is, you know, that's that's Buffalo Trace, man. Got the sweetness factor coming in. It doesn't have the spice and the finish that this has, but probably overall a more pleasing sip from front to back. Doesn't have any, you know, the, the flavor is full. You know, it's not, it doesn't, you know, I'm not searching for it like I am at the Pure Kentucky. Yeah, Weller 107 tends to be, you know, the favorite of the, you know, the Weller group. I mean, I know some people don't like it because of that floral quality to it, but, you know, I definitely dig Weller 107. I live in Ohio, so it's pretty easy to get Weller 107 here, uh, unlike a lot of other places. Uh, let's try the Baker's. 
man, the Baker's just falls so different than the other two. Whereas Weller and, and Pure Kentucky, you can kind of put it in the sweeter profile bucket. Again, Pure Kentucky being a little bit spicier than the Weller 107. The Baker's comes in with more oak, more caramel, more nuttiness. Yeah, as far as a bourbon goes, when you compare all three, it, it, it kind of breaks down like this for me. You have the Baker's, which probably overall is my favorite. It just, I don't know, like as far as a bourbon profile goes, I really dig the Baker's. I think it's probably one of the most underrated bourbons on the shelf. Uh, it's generally ignored. I, I always see it when it's available. Nobody really pays attention to it. Again, it is a bean product. You gotta like that little bit of nuttiness to it. Weller 107, for most people, unfortunately, it's super hard to find but probably the most pleasing across the board as far as sweetness, as far as finish. Um, it's got great texture to it. But the one thing I do wish this had was the finish and the, spice, the spiciness that um, the Kentucky XO has. Now again, Weller 107 is a weeded bourbon, so it's really not supposed to have it. It does have a nice proof point, but it's supposed to be a smoother, easier drinking experience. Uh, but that proof point, I think on the Weller 107, you definitely can feel it a little bit. I don't know, Kentucky XO in comparison, if you like that 107 proof, uh, you can't find Weller. The beam profile isn't really quite what you like. Um, this might be a good option. Again, it's on the spicier side. The more you drink it, the front of the palate does tend to get a little flat. So if you're trying to get in that 107 proof point area, you know, and Weller Antique is really too much or too hard to find for you, or it's very overpriced in your area, or the Baker's, uh, you know, the Baker's 7 isn't quite your flavor profile being a bean product. I think this could fit the bill. The only issue for me is that the more you sip it, the more boring it gets on the palate. I love the finish of it uh, and the spiciness that, you know, is from front to back. So if that sounds interesting, give it a try. If you're really still not sure, then definitely try before you buy this one. There are a lot of great bourbons in that $35 to $40 price point that you can grab. So there you go. All right, guys, I well, hope you enjoyed this review for the Pure Kentucky XO from Willet here on What's on the Shelf Wednesday. If you did, hit the subscribe button below. Please hit the like button. If you haven't yet, follow me on Instagram, follow me on Twitter. Let me know down in the comments what you think of this one, uh, if you've compared it to other 107 bourbons like we did here. Uh, plus, you know, make sure you leave a comment if you have any other bottles or ideas uh, for What's on the Shelf Wednesday. And as I always say, it's not about the whiskey, it's the people you share it with. So cheers. See you next time right here on the Mastin' Drum. Take care, everybody.